this war of attrition between Russia and Ukraine just rolling on. Um, the Russian defense minister visited the uh, front lines in eastern Ukraine as fighting in the region has intensified. Uh, again, we've got winter coming up. Um, basically, they're, they're digging in. They're digging in. Um, and the Russians are saying the situation today suggests the enemy has fewer and fewer opportunities and they will continue to be reduced thanks exclusively to your combat work. Um, again, uh, we don't know what the truth is. You get sides coming out, you know, both sides, our media, their media. I, I look around the globe, various different publications trying to get uh, to some sort of bottom to it. But, the, you know, the reality of the situation is it's almost like we're, we're watching it in some form, you know, World War I trench warfare again. And, and if you go back, you take a look at World War I and how it ended. You know, talk about Armistice Day. And basically, the Germans ran out of money. It was a war of attrition. They, they ran out of money. They started losing allies along the way. Uh, again, led to the Treaty of Versailles, which then you can go on and so on and so forth. But um, you can watch uh, movies, watch uh, 1917, All's Quiet on the Western Front. You can talk about not even that area. You can talk about Gallipoli when the allies tried to invade Turkey. And what a joke that was. And you, you take a look at the losses, the losses on both sides. You got the Ukrainian officials claiming that uh, Moscow is facing massive losses and bloodshed, losing thousands of troops uh, this week. Um, there has been you know, little to no movement. It's like uh, somebody gets a little bit farther, gets pushed back. Again, trench warfare all over again. So what, what do we have, people? We have another war of attrition. And again, this is one of the things that, unfortunately, um, our politicians are, are not making clear, um, that we are going to bankroll this until we no longer can bankroll this anymore, or we get tired of it at this point in time. Now, again, in a war of attrition, yeah, yeah, we can continue to send money there. Again, already uh, the, the public here in the United States is getting sick and tired of it. We see our fiscal situation. Uh, we've got uh, the president of the United States. You've got other politicians on both the right and left saying, hey, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We can do this. We can do that. I'll tell you, one thing we can't do is manage our finances. Um, Russia's got their help, too. I mean, they got China and North Korea, and they got a lot of oil that they want to move, right? Easy trade. I, I need more weapons. I need more stuff. I'll send oil to China. I'll send it to them. Send it to North Korea. They'll send us that over. And most certainly, they have a much larger population than Ukraine has. So what do we have? We have one big damn meat grinder. And the the problem is, once again, is when you have people out there that are saying we cannot, I cannot negotiate with Putin, cannot negotiate with this. Again, then all you have on the horizon is death. Death for, for, for a long ways coming. If, if that is your attitude, if, if that is your attitude that you cannot, there's no negotiating out of this. Well, then we, the taxpayer here in the United States, um, going to continue to send money. Um, Russia is going to continue to get money and more and more people are going to die. Watchdog on wallstreet.com.